Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers and Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and in this video of Power BI interview questions and answer series, we are going to talk about how to calculate MTD, QTD and YTD values and after that we are going to discuss how to compare the current year's values with last year values. So it, it might be sales, it might be any other value that you are referring to. We can go ahead and use the same DAX functions and go ahead and create a comparison like this. So how to do that in practical? Let's see that. Let's get started. Alright guys, so now I am on a Power BI report that I have already created for demo purpose. Now in this report what I am showing is I have a matrix where I am showing you know total sales. I am also calculating sales MTD, QTD and YTD and we have an option to expand or collapse between these which is kind of a generic feature in matrix. I have a bar chart along with that I have two cards so this one is showing sales last year and this one is showing like showing sales this year along with that i have a direction you know arrow which is kind of changing based on sales from the previous year so for example sales this year are more than sales last year so you know this arrow is showing up because sales are you know sales are increased now if I go ahead and click on any other year, so you can see here because sales are less as compared to last year, it is showing downwards, right? So uh, what concerned about us is we are going to create this kind of matrix so that we can have this MTD, QTD and YTD calculations. All right, so let's jump on a new Power BI report. Now just to save some time, I have already imported this sample data and uh, it's sample data is nothing but the some sales data that we are using in this uh, you know report so i'll go ahead and start creating a visualization like this so first of all let's create a matrix and let's ex expand a bit i'll go ahead and take order date and as of now let's expand all all right and i'll go ahead and take the sales amount uh, well, as of now, let's go ahead and create one measure so that I can have total sales measure. All right, so I'll say sum total sales. So sum sales amount. All right. Okay, so now instead of actually this column, I'll go ahead and use the measure. As of now, let's remove this quarter and, and day just to have only month level data. All right. So now, first of all, I'll go ahead and create sales MTD. I'll go ahead and create a new measure and make it as sales underscore MTD. Now for this, we have DAX that says total MTD. Now this total MTD evaluates the specified expression. So expression that would be our total sales over the interval which begins on the first of the month and ends with the last date in the specified date column after applying the specific filter, right? So whatever expression we will be, you know, passing in this DAX, it will calculate it over the period of time as per the date column that we will be, you know, passing in this DAX. So first of all, our expression would be total sales that we have created. All right. And when it comes to date, we'll give this order date column. So select order date. And now because we haven't created any specific date table, we'll make sure that we'll select its date dot date feature and go ahead and close the parentheses. Now I can go ahead and drag this value over here. Now, what actually MTD is doing? So MTD is doing, at, at this point of time, you might be like seeing that this value which we calculated as total sales is looking similar to sales MTD. But what in the backend MTD is doing, it is calculating and accumulating the running total of values at the month level. 
So if I go ahead and in this date, if I take, uh, let me remove it and add it again just to get complete hierarchy. Now, if I go ahead and expand 2018 quarter and if I expand one month, all right. So now you can see here this sales MTD is actually creating a running total. So on 1st January, the amount sales amount exactly the same. On 2nd January, this sales amount is actually sum of date one and two and followed by on third, it's actually sum of these three dates and so on. So this is how MTD works. It actually calculates the running total on a month level and whenever a month will be changed. So for example, if we go ahead and expand the Feb as well, you can see here this amount will, uh, so as of now on 31st Jan, this amount was accumulated. It's, it's a running total. And once the next month will be started, it will uh, reset and start summing up the, you know, sales from 1st Feb and so on. All right, so this is how MTD works. Now let's go ahead and create sales YTD. I'll go ahead and click new measure and I'll name it as sales QTD. All right, so same function, kind of same function. So total QTD will follow, uh, will pass the same expression, which is total sales. Oops. So total sales and this time again, order date and dot date, close the parentheses and, and drag it over here. Now, as it says it is QTD. So what it is doing, actually it is adding up the values based on the quarter. So if you can see here in this QTD column, uh, because we have like four quarters in a year. If I go ahead and just collapse these just to have all the quarters only. All right. So now you can see here when it comes to quarter one, as of now it is showing, uh, let's reduce this one. All right, so what it is doing here is, for example, if we start with a quarter one, so this row is actually showing the subtotal, right? So we don't need to, you know, go on the subtotal as of now, but if we start from the first month of the quarter, so January, so the total sales in January is this much and total sales in Feb is this much. However, if we go in the QTD amount, this amount is actually sum of these two values. Right. And similarly, this amount is some of these three values. And this is how, like there are three months in a quarter. So it has accumulated, it has created a running total of these three months. And whenever a new quarter will start, it will again start with the new values of the first month of that quarter. Right. And again, uh, going forward in the quarter and the quarter of 2019, it will start from the first value of the total sales. Right. So this is how QTD is working. Now, if I go ahead and create another measure and I'll name it as sales YTD. YTD. So total YTD. Again, pass the expression, which is total sales. Order date, dot date, close the parentheses. Now, let me just go ahead and collapse all. Okay and I'll drag sales YTD. And just for this demonstration purpose, let me just go ahead and remove these quarters and day as of now. Okay, so now how sales YTD is working. Uh, as we discussed in the MTD, MTD was calculating values in a single month and it was increasing as the day was getting increased in a particular month. Similarly, QTD is accumulating and creating a running total based on quarters. Now, when it comes to YTD, YTD is creating a running total of values based on year. So for example, we start with 2018 January. So this is the first value, the same, same value for the month one. And in the second month, it will actually accumulate and sum up these two values and so on. However, as 
MTD was getting a reset at the month level YTD will reset at the year level so over here you can see that there was no sales in July but still it has calculated this sum as of now till here till June and because there was no values so it is added nothing but the zero and values remain same until December however whenever a new year will start so from January next year 2019 it will again reset and start adding up values from the month one month two and so on all right so this is how sales MTD QTD and YTD is working and uh, I hope it has given you an enough understanding how to calculate these MTD QTD and YTD now uh, let's discuss how to calculate sales of the previous year and compare it with that all right so I'll go ahead and create another measure oops not the column measure and I'll name it as sales last year all right so to calculate sales last year what we need to do is uh, I'll go ahead and use the calculate function so I want to calculate total sales and in order to calculate total sales of previous year I will use another DAX that is parallel period all right so dates would be order date and when it comes to number of intervals I'll define the minus one because I want to calculate the sales of previous year all right now we are talking about the year level so I'll go ahead and uh, you know select year and close the parentheses all right so let me drag sales last year over here okay so now if we take a look so in when it comes to 2019 the total sales in previous year that was 2018 was 20 million like close to 20 million and that's what is reflecting over here similarly uh, in 2018 because this is the first year that we have in our data it is reflecting nothing like a blank values and once we will move to 2020 we will get the last year you know sales which is nothing but the sales the last running total sales of 2019 all right so I hope it has given you enough understanding how to calculate sales MTD QTD YTD and compare it with the last year values now if you are wondering how can we go ahead and have this kind of you know up and down direction in the you know uh, in the card I'll go ahead and please watch another video that I have uploaded link in the description and this way you will be able to create that arrow and you will be able to create this kind of slicers so I hope uh, you have liked the content if so please go ahead and hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe my channel to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload thank you for watching keep learning have a great day